we'll be talking about how to play with straight bows. Now, I've had a lot of students that suffer from the crooked bow syndrome, and they ask, well, what can I do to play with a straight bow? There's many, many factors of why a crooked bow may happen. One is your elbow elevator is not working in operation, so you want to definitely check out the elbow elevator video to make sure that you are doing the two motions that are acceptable for the bow arm, okay? And these two motions need to not be combined. If you kind of combine the two motions, which is basically your elbow elevator and opening, and you kind of like do something funky like this, you're going to have a crooked bow, okay? So a great way to make sure you don't have a crooked bow, I'm going to give you a lot of different ways to troubleshoot your crooked bow syndrome, okay? One, watch your bow, okay? Now you have a couple of different places you can watch the bow. And it's different for everybody, all right? So everybody, the way they're set up on the instrument, the way their human body is, the way the eyes are, maybe you use glasses, maybe you don't, um, it really changes how you see things. So everybody's reality and perspective towards the violin is different. So I'm gonna give you some multiple ways to, to troubleshoot your crooked bow syndrome visually. Okay, so there's actually three ways. The first way, set your bow on a string and just pull a bow and watch your stick in comparison to the fingerboard. Okay. So you want to make sure your stick is going straight to the fingerboard. crooked bow syndrome and they don't know what to do to get out of it. So we're going to talk about all the different ways you can troubleshoot your crooked bows if you happen to have them, okay? So first off, we're going to talk about visually, what you can do visually to make sure your bow is going straight. Now every violinist is different, every human is different, every body is different, okay? So everybody's reality and perspective, what they see on the violin is going to be different. So I'm going to give you three different ways that you can test you can check to make sure your bow is going straight, okay? So how this process works is you visually look with the violin, okay? And then you, you could do two things. You could do one, play in front of the mirror and visually look in the violin and then kind of look at the mirror at the same time. Or you can record yourself and then that way you're not distracted and then you play back and see exactly which way it is for you, okay? So there are three tests. First test. Okay, you want to check your hair with the bridge. Our bridge is here, and when you pull that bow, you want to make sure that your hair is going parallel to the bridge. Okay, so. For me, that looks like a straight bow. So you want to do that, go ahead and record yourself and then play back and see, wow, is it really truly a straight bow or is it not, okay? The second way is to check the stick of the bow with the edge of the fingerboard. The edge of the fingerboard is here, okay? So we play our A, we watch that the stick of the bow is parallel with the fingerboard. that I see the violin, that one's difficult for me. I feel like my eyes are kind of bugging out a little bit because it's not easy for me to see. For me, the bridge is a lot easier. Okay, but check that it's going straight parallel with the fingerboard. Okay, record yourself, play back or play in the mirror and or play in front of the mirror and check, okay? The third way is to make sure that your bow is going perpendicular with the string. Okay, now let's just review parallel, you're running together. The strings run kind of parallel to each other. So parallel, you're running this way, okay? All right, perpendicular is the cross, okay? So you want to make sure that your bow is making a cross with the string. So check that out. Record it, play it back, or play it from the mirror. 
You're going to find one of these three ways works for you, and that's how you should watch to make sure you're pulling a, a straight bow. That's how you can tell visually. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure you actually go from frog to tip. Now, physically, when you do this, and you realize, okay, I know how I need to look to make sure I have a straight bow, you test it and you watch it, you're going straight. If you feel a little funky in your shoulder, your elbow, or your wrist in order to play that straight bow, that means your muscles have learned incorrectly on how to bow. If you're feeling a little funky, we need to do some retraining, reprogramming of your bow arm because your muscle memory is not correct, okay? So that sounds really scary, discouraging, and terrible, but it's not that big of a deal. We just need to have you be aware, acknowledge that if you put yourself on autopilot, your bow arm is not going to be behaving. So for the next few weeks, you can't play on autopilot. You have to constantly think about your bow arm, okay? So <clears throat> the, the diff you have different contact points on the bow. Your frog is here, your middle is here, and your tip is here. So you want to start at your frog and go all the way to the tip. And just really physically feel how does my bow arm feel, okay? And just keep doing that. Just nice, long, slow bows. You're going to have to do this on every string because you're going to find that some strings feel different than others, okay? Make sure your elbow elevator is in operation. Now, if it's an absolute impossibility for you to pull a straight bow just by yourself, you're going to have to do a little exercise that I have to help you out. Now, this is something I wouldn't use as a crutch and do, sorry, my shoulder rest fell off, um, and do the whole time because um, you can actually develop some other problems, all right? So, what you want to do is um, play, let me just tighten up my shoulder rest, and actually, since this happens, I'll show you what happens. If you use a shoulder rest and it falls off, you see these wonderful little screws here? Just tighten them to the right, okay, to make sure that they're tight. Um, then your shoulder rest will stay on better, okay? <clears throat> so, a nice little video inside a video. <laughs> All right, so I got my shoulder rest on here. Okay, so what you want to do is you're going to be playing up against a wall like this with your bow arm. All right? Now, is it either going to be a wall? Actually, what's even better is a door frame. If you use a door frame or if you have a corner of some sort, you can line yourself up on, okay? So, this is going to be a little difficult to show you at this angle, but what you do is you put your bow arm against the wall, okay? And you adjust your body so that you can play, because you don't want to be like this, you're not able to play. You have to adjust your, your body a little bit. And then you play your A string, and you're going to not be able to move that upper arm the way that you're used to. And you can play with that straight bow, okay? When you do this, only do one string at a time. Make sure that when you go to another string that your elbow elevator is in operation. Because the danger of practicing this way uh, is that you immobilize your bow arm and your elbow elevator doesn't work. That's what I'm saying that it can actually be um, not a good exercise to do for a long period of time because you feel like you can't move your arm this way. You still want to be able to move your arm this way. That's why it's really good just to practice one string at a time, stop, adjust your elbow elevator, then go to another string. And then again, because if, you, if your elbow elevator is not working, they're going to be creating even more problems, and we don't want that to happen, okay? So, so far, just to recap, you have the three different ways to visually look at your bow that is going straight. I've given you an exercise if you're absolutely not able to keep your upper arm still. If you have a wonderful friend, um, uh, roommate, brother, sister, uh, husband and wife that can help you, they can hold on to your upper arm and then you don't have to use the wall. That works too. You can actually kind of do that by yourself. It's a little difficult, but you can bring your, your arm here. Um, but it's a little hard because you're not able to 
um, open up very easily. So it's not the best, but if you absolutely have no other choice, you can kind of experiment with that. <clears throat> and then the other thing to think about is your hand in relationship to the body. Okay? So, for example, if you're playing a, a straight bow, or trying to, and you go crooked in this direction, all right? <clears throat> when you go crooked, your tip is closer to the bridge at the tip, okay? If you're going crooked this way. What you want to do is think about your hand staying closer into the body. So whenever I have students that have a crooked bow going this way, I say, just bring your hand in closer to the body. And that takes care of it, okay? Now say you do an up bow, and whoa, you're going crooked this way, and it's, it does affect your tone. And when you have crooked bows, you have not good tone. So that's why it's very, very important to have straight bows and to troubleshoot your crooked bow syndrome, okay? So here, if you're going crooked this way, you need to bring your hand in closer to the body, okay? And then you can have a straight bow. Now, if you pull a straight bow, or try to, and you go crooked this way, away from you, then your hand needs to go out more in front of you. Okay? So I'll do that again. If you're going this way and it's crooked, this way, your hand needs to go out more in front of you. Okay? Now, another way to make sure that you're pulling straight bows I had a, a teacher, a friend, honestly, I don't remember who told me, or maybe it was a friend who said their teacher told them, something like that, that um, when you pull a down bow, you want to feel like you're pulling a string from your nose, okay? Now, if that helps you to play a straight bow, woohoo, awesome, you know? We just have to figure out how to think about it differently to, in, in order to take care of that crooked bow syndrome, to make sure that you have these beautiful straight bows. So if you think about that, and you're thinking, okay, my hand is here, kind of in relationship to my nose, and I pull a straight uh, string for my nose, you think about it, I mean, visually, you're not really doing it, but it feels like you kind of are, because of our uh, relationship to everything on the violin. Okay, so if that works for you, great. All right, so I have given you everything to troubleshoot your crooked bows, all right? Now, just remember, you have to think about it because if you've played a long time with crooked bows, you're gonna have to revamp the, the programming of your bow arm, all right? So just start from scratch, and don't go on autopilot and really be constantly aware about the muscles in your bow arm. Eventually, they will remember the correct motion and you'll be able to pull straight bows. Now, if you are a, um, a um, player that has played for many years, the word's not coming to my mind right now, but if you are a lifer on the violin, um, this is really great to actually double check because, and this is also another, great reason to um, sporadically make sure you pop into a teacher. Doesn't matter what level you're at, what age you are, um, because sometimes these habits might kind of crop up or you might have new habits come in that aren't good. And one of them might be your bow arm is going slightly crooked and you don't even know it. So it's good to just always double check that your bow arm is going straight. Practice in front of the mirror, play in front of a video camera, and just double track and make sure that you're still on the right track. Okay? Much love and light. Until I see you again in another video or online training, remember, be true, be you, be.